Hi everyone, uh, Rob Romarino with Century Equipment here and uh, we're going to be doing our second in a series of four webinars that we'll be doing taking place today and tomorrow. Today's webinar is going to be called Master the Swirl and what it's about, it's about homemade product production. A homemade product production encompasses a lot of different facets. We have uh, hand scooped ice cream, we have gelato, we have Italian water ice, we have novelties, cakes, uh, pretty much anything that you can make and remarket in your business under a homemade or artisan tag. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why you should go homemade. There's a lot of reasons, and we'll get into those. We're going to get into the why, the how, the what. Let me just take care of a, a few housekeeping items prior to that. Um, first and foremost, there is a th this whole seminar will be recorded, and we will be sent. Sending it out, everybody who registered for these events, I want to thank everybody for, for kind of taking, taking part in this virtual event. Uh, obviously, with COVID, we're not able to have our normal open house, which we look forward to every year. Uh, this year is actually our 40th year in business, so we were looking forward to having an in-person event to really thank our customers. Unfortunately, with COVID, uh, we were not able to do that, so we kind of pivoted to this more virtual format. Uh, so we're giving it a shot. We're trying it out. We wanted to make sure that we still are able to work with our customers to provide some feedback and some tutelage and some knowledge on what we see in the industry, uh, as, as we'll be doing in the, in the upcoming webinar. Uh, but we will be emailing and blasting this out to, to everybody who registered for the event. Uh, we also have a chat to your right. There is a live chat that we'll have our team be looking at during. I'll try to answer some questions if there are any questions. There is a little bit of a delay sometimes, so bear with us there with that. Um, but if there's anything or any comments you have during the event, feel free to throw some comments on there. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking a lot about homemade product production. Uh, you can also view some of these things about making, making product in the ice cream lounge on the left. You'll see videos on how to make gelato, how to make ice, how to make novelties, how to make hand scooped ice cream. In those in that lounge, there's a lot of different categories of everything and anything frozen desserts. So feel free to peruse that. We also encourage you to go into the Expo Center on the site here. Uh, that features all our vendor partners that were nice enough to uh, dedicate some information and their contact. So feel free to go on there, see these these uh, suppliers, see who they are, see what they provide. Uh, a lot of them provided their product guides and videos, uh, who they are and what they do. So it's really great information for anybody in, in the ice cream business. Um, so let me get started on, on, on today's webinar, which is Master the Swirl. So the first thing we look at in kind of mastering the swirl is why should you go into homemade product production? It's a good question because Look, it's, it's, it's an investment. When you go from buying wholesale product and you turn into, I'm going to make this product myself, the question is why? Why do we want to do that? First and foremost, profit, okay? Profit is the name of the game. It's why we're in business. We're in business to, uh, to make money. Uh, it may not be your primary goal, uh, but it's definitely up there. And if you don't make money, you're not going to have longevity. So, the number one reason you should go into making homemade, whatever it is we're dealing with, is more profit, okay? If we look at uh, wholesale hand-scooped ice cream, okay? An average cost of one tub of wholesale hand-scooped ice cream is about $28. Average cost to make that same tub homemade is $14. So you're saving $14 a tub. Now, I understand some, these are average costs. Obviously, some tubs more, some tubs less, depending on the quality of the wholesale, and then making it yourself, it can go up or down, depending on the quality of ingredients you want to put in there, right? Look at gelato. The average cost of one pan of wholesale gelato, 36. Homemade gelato, 18. $18 savings per pan. And Italian water ice, average cost of one tub of wholesale Italian ice, average cost of one tub of homemade, $10 savings. It's an amazing amount of savings. Put that into perspective, okay, over the course of a season. Now, let's just look at a seven-month season. Seven-month season, you're closed for five months. So roughly 10 tubs per day. Additional profit homemade ice cream, 30000 Additional profit Italian ice, 21000 Additional profit gelato, 37000 
That's not revenue. Profit. $30,000 with homemade ice cream, $21,000 with homemade Italian ice cream, $37,000 with homemade gelato. Again, by transitioning from making it, from buying it wholesale to making it yourself, you can save a tremendous amount of money, even just with roughly 10 tubs per day. Even if you cut those numbers in half and you're only selling five tubs a day, those trade savings are still tremendous. Um, so the profit is really, really key in, in what you're doing. Obviously, additional to the profit, look, we work with wholesalers and vendors, and they have wonderful product. They're really great. They're supportive. Our vendor partners in this industry are, are they, they kind of look at it like we look at it, a lot of them, that where your success, our success is your success. But they're also running a business. You know, when you make your own product, you're not subject to mid-season price increases of product. You're not subject to gas surcharges. You're not subject to any of that that can kind of come, those hidden costs that kind of crop up during the cost, course of the year, all right? Also, we've been doing this as, since our 40th year in business. I've had countless customers start out with wholesale and transition to homemade. Every single time, they saw a sales bump when they transitioned from wholesale to homemade, and usually it's in the 15 to 20% range. And nothing really changed other than the fact their location was the same, their staff was the same. Their customer service was the same. They just went from buying it wholesale to making it homemade, and they saw a bump in their sales. So it's a tremendous amount more in profit and obviously more in sales with that sales bump. Why should you go homemade as we continue? Number one, first and foremost, creating your own brand. All right? When you are making your own product, you are creating your own brand that separates you from your competition. Right? You're creating your own brand of ice cream. You're creating your own brand of gelato or Italian ice. By creating your own brand, your customer associates that taste with your store, even if similar flavors. I've seen it many, many, many times where you're selling cookies and cream. Somebody else is selling cookies and cream. But your cookies and cream, you know, you're making it homemade. You're doing something different. Even though it's the same, the customer associates that better taste with your product because it's a branding. Um, your brand helps you connect better with your customer base and perspective, uh, perspective sales opportunities. What that means is branding matters, okay? Starbucks sells a cup of coffee for $5. Take the Starbucks brand off of that, and that same coffee is probably worth a dollar. The reason you pay $5 for it, a lot of people do, is because of the branding of Starbucks, okay? That's the difference. By branding your own product, you have opportunities. You can charge a little bit more per, per, per your product because now you're creating your own brand. You have an artisanal brand, no matter what you're selling. So it's a wonderful opportunity. When you have your own brand, you have that control and you have those opportunities to really market your product a little bit more comfortably. When you're buying wholesale, look, the store down the street can buy the same product. Okay? And then you lose that competitive advantage that you have when you make it yourself. Controlling your inventory. This is a big one, too. Um, in my experience, I talk to customers uh, who are looking to transition from a wholesale to a homemade avenue. And a lot of times, their biggest pain point is um, the inventory. You know, the, the wholesalers are great, and they do a wonderful, wonderful job. But, you know, sometimes there's they're, they're, things are backordered. Sometimes you can't get a flavor. Sometimes... The trucks leak. I mean, there's a lot of little factors that come into it. When you control your, when you make your own product, you control your inventory, meaning you make what you need when you need it, okay? You get a rush on mint chocolate chip for some reason, you don't have to worry that you're out of that flavor until your next delivery. You can make it. You get a rush on mango water ice, you don't have to worry, okay? Just make it. 15 minutes, you got it. Same thing with any gelato products. Same thing with cakes or novelties. You control everything. You ensure product quality and freshness. It's very reassuring to be able to tell your customer, hey, the product you're eating came out of the machine yesterday or came out of the machine an hour ago. Or, you know, we just made that pop. We just made that cake. Um, you're controlling everything. You're not held hostage by anything else. There's no middle person involved in your product production. And controlling that inventory, when you have, that's the product that you're selling. That's what people are buying. That's what they're consuming. That's what they're paying for. You having that control over it is monumental to the success of your store. Why else should you go homemade? All right, well, customize flavors. 
you can make flavors for your customer base. Separate yourself from your competition even more than your branding. You can utilize customer feedback to promote your store better. Have contests, involve your staff. Um, you have full flavor customization to come out whatever, with whatever you want. In our previous seminar, we talked about marketing and, and how do we market better in this, in this COVID environment? Well, the focus was on fun, right? It was on, it was on innovation. It was, that's what we have to look at. We have to keep that. When you create your own product, when you control that, you can come up with whatever you want. When, when I train people how to make ice cream per se or gelato, um, they say, Rob, can I, can I do, can I do? I say, stop, don't even finish the sentence. The answer is yes. You can do whatever the heck you want. I've had people make the weirdest ice creams in the world. I made baklava ice cream the other day and hot chili pepper ice cream, um, all kinds of different flavors. I've made um, uh, breakfast syrup water ice. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's, it was amazing. You know? So you're really only limited by your imagination and it can open up so many different avenues to create more customers, to create more buzz, to create a more bigger social media presence in your store with customized flavors. Um, you can create offerings. So you see that there's a lot of piggybacking out there in today's food markets. You know, different food sections are kind of borrowing some, some trends of what's hot and incorporating it into their food market. Um, think uh, like cereals. Cereals are real popular right now. So you can incorporate cereals into your ice cream when you make it yourself. Have Cinnamon Toast Crunch, have Lucky Charms. Uh, those type of trends you could be on the forefront of and see what's happening out there because you control your product and create those offerings. And all these things we're talking about, it's not just you know to, to fill in your late night uh, internet session. You know, It's about creating more dollars because when you have new unique flavors, when you have buzz, that'll create foot traffic. And when you do everything else right, that foot traffic will not only just create a sale, but it'll create a long time customer. Um, control ingredients. This is, again, is key. So we look at a lot of C's here, right? Create your own brand, control your own inventory, customize flavors, create offerings, control ingredients. You, you will now control every aspect of your product and your ice cream and your gelato and your ice to ensure quality. The market is changing a little bit. It's not what it used to be. Uh, we, you can offer better for you ice cream flavors or, or, or dessert flavors, even cakes and pies and take home items that offer indulgence without the guilt. Okay. For a long time, people were motivated by low calorie, low fat, low sugar. Well, consumers are, are, are pivoting off that. That's not really what it used to be, what it, what it continues to be. Consumers are now focusing on softer, uh, simpler ingredients with more functional benefits. You know, think your real dairy, organic, plant-based, vegan, things like that. Um, so as you control the ingredients, you can create those products. It may be vocal minorities, but it continues to grow. I mean, uh, just a vegan, uh, four years ago, it was about 2%, two, 2.5%. Two now it's 8 9% of people associated as, as vegan. Um, gluten free, all these different, all these different hot topics that we just pish posh for years or customer base pish posh for years. These are significant buying, uh, significant buyers in these markets. And we need to take advantage of those. When you make your own products, you control the ability to, um, to sell these products. Okay. And then you can capitalize as these new categories come along, uh, and, and not break the bank doing it. All right. Now, look, it's never going to be the main focus of your store. If you have, 20 flavors of whatever product you're selling, it's not going to be 18 of them aren't going to be these uh, holistic, <laughs> simple ingredients, functional benefit products. But two or three of them, four of them, you can have, and customers will really appreciate it for you. So, you know, now you got flavors, you got offerings that separate you from your competition, you got ingredients that separate you from your competition, you got a brand that really uh, pinpoints you in your community. You control your own inventory. Those are big, 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 big items. Um, it's very, very important. So we continue with the why. You know, we continue why should you go homemade? Well, creating new profit centers within your store with novelty and take home products. Ice cream cakes and pies, take home pints and quarts, ice cream and cookie sandwiches, frozen ice pops, cakes. I mean, the list goes on and on. 
there's a tremendous opportunity to create a novelty profit center within your store. It's harder to do when you're buying wholesale, not impossible, harder. When you are creating your own, when you have your own brand and you do take home pints, take home ports, whatever it may be with ice cream, with gelato, with ice, that's a profit center. You know, give me eight foot of, of space in your, your store and I can create a novelty profit center that will create a tremendous amount of dollars. Okay, The novelty ice cream business in 2020 increased 16% over 2019, 16%. It's a billion dollar industry. Uh, if you're not selling take home products in your store, you're really missing out on that advantage. A cone sells for $43, dollars $5. An ice cream cake sells for $39.95. Okay? So the opportunity to, to leverage those products with your product, with your homemade production is huge. Okay. Um, there's tremendous profit in those items. Obviously, you can customize them as well. You can customize cakes for customers. You know, when you make it yourself, it's not just a vanilla chocolate cake they can get in a supermarket. You can do a mint chocolate chip and cookie dough, a layered cake. You can do whatever you want. So tremendous opportunity to create a novelty profit center. Here at Center, we've been really pushing novelties for customers for, for years now. Um, the, the customers who really do a wonderful job have seen a, 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 a really, really high uptick in sales and profit because of it. The other thing that it gets you, look, we go back to brand. Somebody buys a six pack of ice cream sandwiches or your take home pine or quart and they put it in their freezer. That night when they're going to make dinner, two nights later, they open their freezer and what do they see? They see your brand. You stay top of mind. It's a wonderful and tremendous opportunity. Uh, to build your brand and, and continue the momentum you have with customers. Um, when you make your own product, you can also create new profit centers outside your store with wholesale opportunities. Customers that, that, that have pints, quarts, tubs, pans, I guarantee you when, when the public and the community sees that you're making this and it's homemade and it's artisan and it's made right there in the store, they're going to say, well, you know, I have a market. You know, I'm thinking about putting ice cream in. Would you be able to provide ice cream for me? Or, you know, would you be able to provide ice for our daycare center? Or would you be able to provide gelato for my restaurant? The, you, the, the, the opportunities will present themselves as long as you provide that quality product. And they're only presenting themselves because of the homemade handcrafted aspect of your product. So those things will really, really come to the forefront. When should you go home? We talked a lot about the why. Okay. Um, the question now is uh, when? When do you go home? Eat? Well, look, if the defining products of your operation are hand scooped, Italian ice, gelato, you really need to strongly consider going to a homemade product. If you're a soft serve shop, and you're 90% soft serve or 80%, you know, 70%, in the range where a high percentage of your sales are coming from soft serve ice cream. All right, I understand. You know, the investment doesn't make sense. But if one of the pillars of your store is hand scooped Italian ice or gelato, and that's what you're really basing your business off of, why wouldn't you want to have the best product and quality, the most profitable, and, and those, all those other things that we just tied into the why? Um, if you've been doing wholesale and can calculate savings that can give you a quick return on investment, you need to consider going home eat. What I mean by that is we, a lot of times we sat with customers and said, okay, how many tubs of water ice did you sell last year? How many tubs of ice cream? And we could do the math and say, well, this, if you do this and you save this much, and here's the investment that you would have to make, um, it makes sense. I mean, I've had customers to pay off the investment in, in two, three months. And, and after that, for the next 15 years, it's just additional profit, not to mention all the other benefits we talked about. If you're experiencing issues with wholesale products that cannot be overcome, um, again, this, this goes to you, you can't get product or you can't get deliveries enough or you don't have the quality that you want, you got to consider it. Your market demands a homemade product and the positives that align with it. There are certain markets that are so artisan that they want a homemade product and they, desire, they, they, they need it and, and they're not gonna buy to the point where you need them to buy without it. Uh, the profit centers, marketability and overall control of ingredients 
and quality offer a perceived strategic advantage too high to overlook. Basically, that says all the positives are so positive that you're positive that you need to do this, okay? Uh, all the things we just talked about, you, you, you'd be crazy if you did. And your competition that you're going into the market with or you're in the market with aren't. So really, making your own gives you such a high strategic and branding advantage that you have to take the lead. Um, and where you have branding and wholesale opportunities with homemade products, like you're getting not, you know, the, the, the market down the street wants to buy 30 tubs a week. The restaurant down the street wants to buy 10 pans a night of gelato. You know, those opportunities that if you make your own product, you could take advantage of. Um, look, there's times that you shouldn't go into homemade. Uh, if your sales of your wholesale entities are not enough, I mean, I have some customers, they just don't sell enough of the product to, to justify the expense of, of doing it. Uh, if that's the case, all right, well, let's let's build the brand. Let's build the business more. Um, or hand scoop, gelato, Italian ice are not an integral product categories in your store. They kind of both go hand in hand because if they were integral, the, the sales should be enough. And if they're not integral, obviously they're not. So if, like I said, if you're high, high volume soft serve and that's what you do, uh, I get it. It doesn't make sense. How should you go homemade? Well, <laughs> um, let me go back one thing. You notice I didn't say, because this is a common objection I have from customers, I don't have the time to do it, Rob. I, I don't have the time to make my own product. Frankly, that's not an excuse to me. Um, you were in business. The time in the ice cream business, you know, we open at 12 o'clock. You do probably 70, 80 percent of your dollars from what, five to 10. So that means there's a lot of time during the day that's 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 slow. OK. If I can give you an additional thirty thousand dollars in profit a year, twenty thousand, whatever it is, would you take it? Yes. Would you find the time to take that money? Absolutely. So, um, time is not an excuse that I look as a barrier uh, when I when I talk to customers about this. So that's why I just wanted to go back and touch upon that. So, how should you go homey? Well, first you got to understand the cost involved in in making your own product because it's not it. It's it's not an inexpensive investment, okay? You have to do the math. You know, you need a batch equipment, the machines to make the product. You need, depending on the product you're doing, you need display freezers, you need maybe storage freezers, you need blast freezers. You know, there's opening inventory involved. There's small wares and production tools that you will need um, for this. And we, you know, we sit down with our customers and we look at, hey, what, are, what, what is it gonna cost us? And we, we take it down to the penny, so they understand what they're getting involved into and we do the math and especially if you're the existing business and you're already selling product it's easier to do that um, but we want you to understand that what the return on investment is if you're already in business or what the costs are going to be if you're getting into business okay figure out who will be involved in product production and recipe development get involved with support staff and industry experts look it's very important that you involve yourself with companies who are going to have your best, uh, your best wishes behind them. You know, like um, I, I, I'll give you a shameless plug, but it is what it is. You know, we only succeed if our customers succeed. So we're not dropping off machines and wishing people luck. We want to help them. We want to teach them. We want to motivate them. We want to make sure they consult them. There's vendors out there that do the exact same thing. Okay, because yeah, you are going to need to buy mix. You are going to need to buy toppings and variegates and bases to create this product. But the, a lot of these vendors out there will be a partner with you, just like we do. You know, take advantage of that. Don't do it alone. I mean, it's very, very important that you have that support, okay? Try before you buy. Make product, demo equipment, visit stores who are making it. Do the field research to understand what you think so that you can create a product that you're proud of, all right? Don't just go in blind and, and, and buy you know, something off the internet. You, you got to put your hands on this stuff. You know, you're going to be doing this or somebody's going to be doing this. It's very important you try. Create a complete recipe book, procedures, inventory control systems. Um, we're all small businesses, right? But small business is a very generic term, okay? A small business could be a $20 million business. It could be a, a, a $50,000 business. That doesn't mean we can't run it the right way. Having procedures, having recipes, controlling the inventory so you know what to buy, when to buy, 
having a rotation for your products is important. It'll help make your life easier. It'll help make the product better. Start small and work your way into more. If you're doing wholesale right now and you have 32 flavors, you don't have to start making 32 flavors. You can make a couple flavors, four, eight, ten, the big hitters, and then graduate. I do it with customers all the time, and within a very small time frame, they're expanding. They're making as many as they can because it's not as hard as you think, and it's very, very fun, and it's enjoyable. So, uh, But you don't have to – you can kind of crawl before you walk and walk before you run. Continued on the how, you got to train your staff. Utilize your infrastructure to uncover opportunities. A lot of customers tell me, Rob, I can't. I have to be the only one to make ice cream. I can't have anybody else make it. Why? Why? I don't trust them. Okay, so we trust our employees with our customers. We trust our employees with our money. We trust our employees with all that, but we can't trust them to make the ice cream? It's No, it's using your employees. Again, we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow in our seminar with brand ambassadors. Look, we are, whatever generation you're from, that's our perspective. Your employees are probably from a different generation, so they'll give you a different perspective. They'll come up with different innovations that you can't see or I can't see or someone else can't see. Utilize them. You know, Help them make the products so you can work more at the business than in the business. Now, again, if they have the recipes and the training and the inventory control, you're making their life easier, thereby making your life easier. Um, you know, if your employees are involved in the production of product and the innovations of product, they'll, they'll be they'll be brand ambassadors for you, okay? They'll be telling everybody, oh, mom, you got to come in and I made this ice cream the other day. And mom's telling everybody else in the community, oh, my daughter's making ice cream, you got to go in there. Trust me, they will have fun, they will love it, and they will help you promote it. Look for new profit centers both in and out of your location. So what that means is, look, is there opportunities to sell this product somewhere else? Is, is there novelty opportunities within your own store? Are there other other products that you can make to sell somewhere else. You got to innovate. You got to think. You got to create. You got to keep moving forward. Always keep moving forward. Every year, add a different product. Every come up with specials every summer. Okay, come up with with different unique things every fall. I mean, there's see the nice thing with ice cream. There's seasons. There's hot buttons. There's cold buttons. There's even within the summer. There's different seasons. You got peach season. You got blueberry season. You can leverage these opportunities making your own product. Keep moving forward. And promote the homemade products. The worst thing you could do is spend all this money to start making your homemade product, spend all this time to learn how to make it, get everybody internally motivated, but nobody nobody knows about it. Your, your customers don't know about it. Your social media doesn't know about it. Promote it. Right? I'll give you a quick example. I had a customer about 10 years they were buying wholesale product. Um, to keep the math simple, they did about 200000 a year in sales. They started making it themselves. For a year, they were making it themselves. I said, Rob, you know, we went up a little bit. I think we went up to like, you know, 205, 208, but we don't know if that was because of what, cause we don't know if it's weather or why. I said, well, where's the homemade ice cream sign? Oh, well, we tell people sometimes. Next year, the next year, we put a TV streaming them making ice cream. We took like a quick video of it. We put home, everything home crafted ice cream on the menu above it in like a stencil. Um, we put it in the window now featuring homemade handcrafted ice cream. Their sales of their ice cream that year increased over 35 percent. OK, nothing changed, but you have to hit people over the head that you're doing it. Use your marketing platforms to push them. Be sure to promote in the store as well. I, I say to people all the time, you come up with a new flavor. You just came up with Cookie Monster. Right. It's the blue with, the, the, with a lot of different ways to make it. Well, every day you should have a cup out and say, hey, did you try our new cookie monster? Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. We just made this yesterday. Hey, you try our cinnamon toast crunch? Try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. I like sampling when people have already bought. If you have the opportunity to walk your store, whether you're inside or outside, and people are kind of already bought, they already purchased, and you just walk a tray of products around, have an employee walk around, people's guards down. They know you're not trying to sell them anything. They already bought so they're more willing to try things. Now, when they're in their car on the way home, they think, oh, my gosh, that you taste that cinnamon toast ice cream was unbelievable. Taste that banana split ice cream was unbelievable. Now they're coming back the next day to get a full-size serving of it.
like I said, create videos, pictures, stories of production. Let the public see what you're doing. Um, and leverage customers to help create new flavors. Just like we're leveraging our employees, talk to your customers. Hey, what would you like to see? Any ideas? Let's have a Sunday contest. It builds brand loyalty. It helps innovation. You know, it's not all on us to come up with the ideas. You know, any ice cream store is going to have uh, 50, 60, 70, 100,000 100, register rings or customer rings. That's a lot of opportunity to get feedback. You know, use your social media to get feedback. See what people want. See what they're willing to eat, what they're willing to try. So I'm going to wrap up. Have you mastered the swirl? So why should you go homemade? Well, we go back to the profit, the branding, the control, the customization, the creation, all those, those letter C's. Um, when should you go homemade? Do the math. Do the math. Um, how important are these products to your store? It's very important to understand that. When you understand how important the products are to your store, it helps you understand if, if it's the time for you to jump into this. How should you go homemade? Well, understand the costs, create systems, utilize a support system. And then of course, like with everything, you gotta promote and you gotta market it. So when you're looking at making your own product, there's there's the why, there's the how, there's the when. Understand, you know, if you are, are making your own product, great, look, look, wonderful. But I guarantee you, even within that category, there's things that you could be adding, could be making. Um, if you're looking at doing it, talk to the experts. You know, we're here, our vendor partners are here. There's a lot of different people who can help you understand if it's the right choice to kind of grow your business. But I guarantee it will grow your business, 100% without a doubt. Um, uh, people really care about the freshness and, and what they're putting into their body. So having that control is, is very important. Um, again, just to want to thank everybody for, for kind of tuning in. Um, I can kind of go on and on and on <laughs> with, with these topics, but we try to keep them short and condensed. I want to thank everybody. Hope you got something out of it. Appreciate it and look forward to a great 2021 season for everybody. God bless. Thank you.